Health and Human Services Secretary Tom Price made a damning admission about Trump care over the weekend. Uh, listen to this. Health and Human Services Secretary Tom Price suggested Sunday that the nation's health insurance system ought to operate as it did before the Affordable Care Act was passed. During an appearance on ABC's This Week, Price was asked to respond to a blistering criticism of the Senate Republicans' health care proposal by two major groups representing the U.S. health insurance industry. In a letter to Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell earlier this week, the groups called the latest version of the bill simply unworkable in any form and warned that it would cause widespread terminations of coverage to people with serious medical problems. Quote, it's really perplexing, especially from the insurance companies, because all they have to do is dust off how they did business before Obamacare, Price said, referring to an amendment proposed by Senator Ted Cruz that would allow insurers to resume sales of policies that leave out key benefits such as prescription drugs or mental health treatment. Okay, so what they're talking about is catastrophic coverage plans. And catastrophic coverage plans were basically a scam where the health insurance companies would take your money, be a very it, very low cost plan, but what happens is you don't get covered unless you're like about to die. And even if you're at the point where you're about to die, there's a, a tremendously high um, deductible that you have to pay or copay that you have to pay. And, um, it, do, you know, it doesn't cover like 98% of issues that you might have when it comes to healthcare. So people who are young and healthy love those plans, but then when something happens where they actually need real coverage, they get screwed. And in fact, under, uh, this cruise amendment, they're locked out of the regular insurance market for something like six months. If they have the catastrophic coverage, uh, care, the catastrophic coverage, and then something happens, uh, where they want coverage, but it doesn't, it's not included in their catastrophic coverage. They can't like go to another plan. So it kind of like locks them in to that bad decision that they made. Now, the article from the health insurance company is, I got to be honest, man, I don't believe them. So to me, this is just like when like you ask Exxon Mobil or BP their thoughts on climate change and the Paris Agreement. And they're like, oh, yes. We totally agree with the Paris Agreement. Uh, and we think climate change is real and it is a big problem. So they say these things, but that's just for PR reasons, because behind the scenes, they they act in the opposite way, where they know their profits are going to go up. They know it's better for the bottom line if we don't go along with the Paris Agreement and if we don't actually do something to fight climate change, because the ultimate end goal in fighting climate change is what? The elimination of fossil fuels. That's what it is. You think ExxonMobil and BP and Chevron don't know that? Of course they know that. So when they say things like, oh, yeah, no, totally, we're on board with fighting climate change, that's because at this point, the the facts and the evidence are so overwhelming that that's the best move that they can make uh, for PR reasons to appear like they're hip and they're down with the times and they understand what's going on. They don't. They're more savvy than just going out there like many of the Republican politicians and going, we don't know if climate change is happening. Or the other argument of, we know it's happening, but maybe it's a good thing. So it's the same thing with these health insurance companies. They're like, oh, please don't go back to the way you were doing business before. They actually would love that. Um, and, I mean, that's the main point of this story, too, is like, look at what Tom Price is arguing. He just comes out and says it. Like, hey, dipshit, you should have found a way to at least be more clever and, like, code it. But he couldn't even code it. He's like, yeah, um, they should just brush off the book on how they were doing it before Obamacare. So you mean the system that was so incredibly abysmal and hurt the American people so much that we desperately needed reform. He's like, let's go back to that system. Let's go back to the bad old days. But that shows you these guys are ideologues. It's not about, they're doing, trying to do healthcare reform and health insurance reform, and everything they're proposing makes things worse. So they're like, oh yeah, we need to reform this, and, but okay, our, our ideas kick off, kick 28 million people more off of health insurance. <laughs> so then why are you even doing it? It's like, you're, you're doing anti-reform. You're doing reform in the wrong direction. <laughs> So, but that shows you their ideologues and that to them, all that matters is the sanctity of the free market 
and letting the health insurance companies get away with whatever the hell they want to get away with. Again, I don't buy this letter from the health insurance company. Oh, this is such a bad idea. Please do not go in this direction. We will have to kick a lot of people off of insurance. I love that. Like, I, I mean, look, did you, we're going to have to kick a lot of people off of insurance. Yeah, because you're, uh, again, legally given the ability to do that, and you're going to do it to maximize profit for your shareholders because you're a rapacious, for-profit, price-gouging uh, health insurance company. So they're in cahoots. The Republicans and the health insurance companies are in cahoots. But it's amazing that Tom Price would just come out and say that. He would just come out and say, let's go back to how we were doing it before Obamacare. And that's the thing that's so incoherent about the right on this issue of health care and health insurance. If you ask somebody on the left, hey, what's the ideal health insurance system? You're going to get an answer like that. You're going to say Medicare for all. I don't, even know, I don't know what you mean. Of course, Medicare for all. Every other modern nation has one version or another of a single-payer system. Yeah, that's what we should have. So that we have our answers, and we have it, and it's based on evidence. Now, if you ask somebody on the right, to be fair to run-of-the-mill Republicans, there are more Republican, average Joe Republicans that support Medicare for All than don't support Medicare for All. So they're exempt from my criticism. I'm talking to people in the party, the party establishment, the elite in Washington. You ask them, hey, what's, uh, you know, if you're cr crafting a... A health insurance system or health care system from scratch, what's the ideal system? Their answer, <laughs> they got nothing for you. They, uh, well, see, what we should do is we should eliminate the lines around the states and allow the insurance companies to go from state to state, cross state lines, and we should, like, it, it's all just talk points. Uh, uh, do tort reform and make sure that people can't sue for uh, a, a lot of money and what? You think these are going to solve any of the serious issues we have in our system? Millions of people who are uninsured, medical bankruptcies out the wazoo, you know, deaths be from lack of coverage. Like, you're not addressing any of those things. And then finally, when you get down to the heart of it, what will they tell you? Free market. That's what they'll tell you. Oh, but the ideal health insurance is free market. It's free market. That's what it is. We should be free market. But how do they answer for the fact that before Obamacare, it was the wild, wild west of the free market. And what were the results? The results were horrendous. That's why we needed immediate reform. So we already tried your ideal system, and your ideal system was the worst possible system. So we already tried it. And even under Obamacare, you're keeping the private health insurance companies in control of the system. And we still have massive problems because of them. So it's... They act like this is such a classic Republican politician move. They act like we've never tried their shitty ideas when that's all we've tried and it's what led to the problems in the first place. It is the problem. It's like with, you know, their economic ideology. Well, you know, what we should do is we should deregulate and cut taxes for the rich. Yeah, let's try that. Okay, but that's what we did in the 19-teens and the 1920s. We had the Roaring Twenties, and then boom, we had the Great Depression, everything fell off a cliff. That's what we did under Bill Clinton and George W. Bush. Uh, specifically, the tax cuts were under George W. Bush, but the deregulation was under Bill Clinton and George W. Bush. And what do we have? Same thing. Boom, bust cycle. Everything takes off. Wow, oh my God, look at this. The housing prices are going up and they will never come down. It is 2006 and we are idiots. And then boom, 2007, 2008. Subprime mortgage crisis, Great Recession. Because every time you deregulate and cut taxes for the rich, that's what happens. But that they can't help themselves. That's right. You know, maybe we should try deregulating and cutting taxes for the rich. We've tried that a thousand fucking times, and every time there's a giant crash. How do you not get this? Or they get it, but they don't care. They don't care because the goal isn't a fundamentally stable economy that's good for everybody. The goal is, I want my rich executive friends to run out the back door with all the money. So if that's priority number one, then they're doing well because that's all they're trying to fulfill and that they do succeed at fulfilling. So, man, the admissions that these guys make, how disconnected does Tom Price have to be to just say that? Yeah, let's go back to what it was like before. When everybody was getting fucked over except the mega rich, that's what you want to do? That's what you want to do. He's like, yeah, let's do that. But you know what? I don't know why I'm surprised because this is a guy, Tom Price. What is it? He traded like $300,000 in healthcare stocks in companies that he proposed legislation that would affect their bottom line. 
I mean, that corruption is so in your face and so overt and brazen that that may actually violate laws, which is why Trump had to fire, had to fire, he didn't have to, he did because he's a corrupt piece of shit, but that's why Trump fired Preet Bharara, the U.S. attorney who was investigating Tom Price, another scandal and nobody talks about that's a real scandal with the Trump administration. Don't ask the Democrats, they're too busy chasing their, their own tail over the, the Russia issue to talk about something where all the evidence is right there. U.S. attorney investigating corrupt Trump pick, Health and Human Services Secretary, who traded in healthcare stock as he was proposing legislation to bump those stocks up, clear corruption, and then he fires the guy when, oh, shit, he's investigating the guy I picked? Fired. But, and that's why they picked uh, Tom Price for Health and Human Services Secretary. They know he's a good old boy who's gonna go along to get along and be corrupt like the rest of them. So, man, you want to talk about the fucking swamp. This is the swamp. This is the cesspool. Whatever the fuck you want to call it. It is the worst of the worst of the worst. And they can't even hide their... Uh, how loathsome they are now. Let's go back to how the healthcare system was before. Because <laughs> every ob objective way of measuring that system, it was worse. It's still shitty now. But that's because it's still the private health insurance companies in the driver's seat. But every uh, ob objective, I don't know why I'm struggling saying that word today, measurable um, way of looking at the system, that did not come out very cleanly. <laughs> but I think you get the point. Every single, by any standard that you evaluate uh, the previous system, it was worse. But that's what he wants to get back to because his rich buddies would get even richer.